Alleluia, Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. I greet you all this Easter morning. I'm so happy to be in worship with all of you here at, in the sanctuary. Those who are online as part of this worship service, it's a joy for us to be here celebrating together. Uh, a year ago was a very different Easter. We weren't even here in the building and it was, was uh, pretty sad in a way that we couldn't celebrate what we're gonna celebrate today. Um, to our huts desire. Um, a welcome to the many visitors who are joining us today. Uh, glad to have you with us. For those in the sanctuary, a reminder, because of COVID, we're still trying to be careful. We hum, we don't sing. Jim will sing, so we have somebody saying the words, but um, when we do the hymns, everybody please just him uh, hum <laughs> and keep your masks on all the time. Don't even take them off if you're speaking or anything. Thank you so much. Sharing joys and concerns, um, a couple of uh, important ones to lift up to you. Please uh, be praying for Roland Tompkins. He has had quite a week. He's in the hospital. I don't remember if he's still in ICU or not. He has meningitis. He had a stroke and he's got an infection in his brain. So prayers for, for Roland and certainly for Donna as well. Tough week for both of them and it's gonna be ongoing. Uh, continued prayers for Will and Sherry Karsten and their family. Again, they're going through a whole bunch of stuff. Um, can't even go into the details with all of them, but please keep them and their family in prayer as they too are struggling with a lot of medical stuff happening right now. Uh, but the joy is that we are here together today in worshiping. Are there any other joys or concerns we can lift up today? Okay, then. Let us prepare to worship with our whole hearts and souls and bodies and mind as we listen to Martha's prelude.
told me. Lisa told me to make sure I use her left hand when I do that. And you see what I did? I put my right hand up. She says he hit the microphone sometimes. I apologize. Please join me in our call to worship. Christ is alive. Alleluia. God's steadfast love endures forever. We gather in the name of the one who gives us life. Christ is alive. Alleluia. We pray in the name of the one whose life shows us how to live. Christ is alive. Alleluia. We serve in the name of the one who died and rose again. Christ is alive. Alleluia. God's steadfast love endures forever. Please join us in our morning prayer. God, God it has happened. The Alleluia are restored. The whole of creation has found voice and proclaims in every molecule, death has no power. May we celebrate today, Alleluia. It has happened that the tombstones and graveyards have become places of life and the whole rhythm of faith explodes into this day with a power that conquers death. May we dance to the beat, Alleluia. It has happened. The Good Friday has met Easter Day and life has won. In this resurrection morning, your people raise you, celebrating with all that is alive and proclaim to the world, death is no more. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Our first hymn this morning is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. It's in the blue hymnal. <laughs>
can be seated. Our call to confession, Jesus' rising from the dead assures us that we too have been given new life. Let us confess our sins before God and one another, certain of God's mercy as we pray together saying, merciful God, we recognize the times that we turn away from the suffering around us when we become too busy get caught in the routines and tasks of each day, when we become numbered by the growing needs in the community, us, when we become unfriendly to those who ask for help, God, in your mercy, forgive us. Forgive our greedy hearts when we desire to be over the problem. Forgive us skinny hands as we hold our wants for giving another need. God, in your mercy, forgive us. In a confusing world, we see your guidance, God. We ask for your forgiveness and our misunderstandings and our preoccupations and move us ever closer to you. May our hearts and lives be enlightened as we tend our fields in compassion and care, releasing that which no longer serves you. Amen. In this time of silence, please take a few moments for your own private prayer of confession. our assurance of pardon. Having heard our prayers, God whispers our names, telling us that we are forgiven. Let us rejoice, alleluia. Our special music this morning, Crown Him Lord this Easter Day. We have Jim Constantine, Ann Jennings, and Lisa Heckman.
our prayer of illumination. Roll the stones away from our hearts, O God, that in having hearing your word, we may receive new life. Amen. Our scripture is from 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 11, from the message. Friends, let me go over the message with you one final time. This message that I proclaimed and that you made your own. This message on which you took your stand and by which your life has been saved. I'm assuming now that your belief was the real thing and not a, pan not a passing fancy, that you're in this for good and holding fast. The first thing I did was place you before what was placed so empathetically before me, that the Messiah died for our sins, exactly as scripture tells it. That he was buried, that he was raised from death on the third day, again, exactly as scripture says. That he presented himself alive to Peter, then, he, then his closest followers, and later to more than 500 of his followers, all at the same time, most of them still around, although a few have since died. That he then spent with James and the rest of those he commissioned to represent him. And that he finally presented himself alive to me. It was fitting that I bring up the rear. I don't deserve to be included in that inner circle, as you well know, having spent all those early years trying my best to stamp God's church right out of existence. But because, but because God was so gracious, so very generous, here I am. And, and I'm not about to let his grace go to waste. Haven't I worked hard trying to do more than any of the others? Even then, my work didn't amount to all that much. It was God giving me the work to do, God giving me the energy to do it. So whatever you heard from me or from those others, it's all the same. We spoke God's truth and you entrusted our lives. On the Friday that we now call Good Friday, Jesus was whipped and then killed. It was a horrible, sad, bloody day. Jesus' friends could hardly believe what had happened. They could barely breathe. On late Friday afternoon, not long before sundown, two women, two Marys, Mary from Magdala and Mary, mom to James and Josie's, witnessed the final moments of Jesus's life and the beginning moments of his death. These women were his friends, his followers. They had, had helped provide for his ministry in Galilee and had come with him to Jerusalem. They watched as another friend, Joseph from the town of Arimathea, took Jesus's now lifeless body down from the cross, wrapped it in a sheet and laid it in a new tomb. They watched while a big, heavy stone was rolled across the entrance, closing him away, blocking their dreams of a different future, sealing off all the promises that were fulfilled in Jesus. Everyone went home to hide and cry and try to figure out what happened. The observing women, though, noticed something. Joseph failed to wash and prepare the body for burial. Maybe it was due to lack of time before the Sabbath began at sundown, 
On Sabbath, it was unlawful to touch or even be near a dead body. After making their preparations on Saturday evening, the Marys and their friend Salome now come early on Sunday morning to do the last thing they can do for their friend and master, Jesus. Like the stone barring the tomb, their hearts are big with love and heavy with profound grief. Listen to what happened early that morning. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus's body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on the way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The women raced from the tomb. They never got to do what they went there to do. On the way, they had been so focused on the stone and carefully cradling the spice jars in their arms. Now the stone is a non-issue and the spice jars lie in broken pieces on the floor of the empty tomb. Mary, Mary and Salome went to do one last act of loving kindness for their friend. They meant to take care of death. Instead, they found that death is gone, life is possible, and Jesus has something new for them to do. Go and tell. Death doesn't have the final word, go and tell. Jesus goes before us still, go and tell. The promise lives on, go and tell. But that's not what the women do, at least not at first. They are stunned, their heads are spinning. They are amazed and terrified. They don't know what to make of all of this. He is raised. What does that mean? Despite all that Jesus had taught them and all they had come to believe about him, they had come to the tomb expecting to find a dead body not a resurrected one. After the horror they had seen the past few days, they couldn't wrap their heads around this new thing that God was doing. We are not so different. Plenty of things happen in the world that are hard for us to wrap our heads around. A child dying of cancer or any other means. Prejudice, racism, intolerance one mass shooting after another, and the scene that happened at the Capitol building yet again. Coping with a loved one with dementia or a child with autism. All too often we're, we're confronted with news that saddens, alarms, or even terrorizes us. It can be hard to remember at those times that God persists in the midst of speechlessness in death, in the outer reaches of our own experiences and of our social lives. God persists where life unfolds underfoot, as it were. It's hard to remember when our thoughts are focused on the negative, locked away in a tomb. A friend of mine, we'll call her Jill, 
attends a worship that has mostly contemporary worship. They have video screens on the walls. We project, we don't have a screen yet, but that's okay. Um, they have a um, praise rock band that uh, plays rock music and has for many years. Jill sits in the back of the sanctuary because, well, she likes to dance. When the music gets started, she doesn't just sit there and raise her arms and praise. She moves with her whole body. So she sits in the back where there's room to move and she won't disturb anyone else except her husband and sons, but they've learned to duck and get out of her way. One day, Jill noticed someone new worshiping some rose in front of her. She noticed because that woman was dancing too. After seeing her for a few weeks, Jill just had to go and introduce herself, feeling that they were truly sisters in faith. As often happens, the common question was asked, what made you come here? And the woman answered, well, I've been to other churches, but they still act like they're still in the ground. We indeed can be stuck in the ground, caught up in the concerns of life, bills to pay, too much to get done, the latest pandemic protocols or where to sign up for vaccine. We forget that the cross and Friday didn't have the last word. Life is not hopeless, even when we're worried about paying car insurance for that new 16 year old driver, or if our retirement income really will be enough to live on or how we're gonna manage with our new diagnosis of diabetes, or what to do with fewer resources to support our ministries, or one of the 50 million other issues that weigh us down. We don't have to let all those problems define us, especially when Jesus has better things in store. As Mary and Mary and Salome approach the tomb, their worry was that the body of Jesus might be all too secure, that the large stone blocking the entrance may be too much for them to move and will prevent them access to the one they've come to anoint. But upon arrival, they find that they actually have the opposite problem. Jesus is not unavailable because his lifeless corpse is locked behind a barrier. Jesus is unavailable because the stone is removed and he's alive and he's off doing other stuff. Jesus is not present because he has better things to do than hang around in a tomb. He leaves a heavenly administrative assistant there to explain, you're looking for Jesus? Sorry, you just missed him. You've missed him because he's moved on ahead to other pressing business. The resurrection Lord, resurrected Lord has no intention of giving us time to sit around pondering whether we believe in this sort of thing or not, or even to dwell a while on our misery. Instead, the instruction to the women is to tell the disciples, especially Peter who denied him, that they had better get on the move. Jesus had explained already that after he was raised up, he would go ahead of them to Galilee. Now the young man reminds them of this scheduled rendezvous. If it's Jesus they want, they will need to head on back to Galilee. Jesus isn't stuck in the tomb, and is, but is active out in the world. Now the women may have left the tomb, stunned and silent, but somewhere along the line, somebody told. Paul, in one of the earliest writings in the New Testament, written even before Mark's gospel that we read today, says he placed before the Corinthians the same gospel message that had been placed before him. The message didn't end at the doorway of that empty tomb. The power of the resurrection is in the way it changed the lives of those who encountered the risen Christ, who encounter him still. Their present reality is different their hearts are transformed. God loves the world so much that God came as Jesus to live as one of us. Jesus lived life to the fullest, just like the rest of us. He had ordinary good days, 
eating meals with friends and family, enjoying his ministry and travels with his companions, delighting in the laughter of children. But he also knew the loss of loved ones, the death of his father, the betrayal and rejection of friends, the constant animosity of enemies. He had his moments of triumph, like when he entered Jerusalem on the Palm Sunday parade. And he experienced the very worst any of us suffer through the agony and humiliation of the cross, the ultimate failure in the world's way of thinking. God loved us, loves us so much that Jesus came alongside of us and experienced all of that for us. Yet God's love doesn't end. The parade down Mount Olivet wasn't the end of the story. God's love and promises live on. The cross wasn't the end of the story. The empty tomb wasn't the end of the story. Even all those recorded appearances to the Marys and Salome and Peter and James and John and all of the others down through Paul were not the end of the story. The resurrection was not a one-time occurrence, been and done. Through it, Christ has gone ahead into our Galilees, our hometowns, where he is still present in our lives, in our every days. God's love and promises are here now with us in the living Christ. The women may have been frightened when they left the tomb, but eventually they found their voices and passed on the message of God's resurrected Jesus. Paul passed on the message that had likewise been entrusted to him onto the Corinthians and to oh so many other congregations. It spread beyond Judea and out into the Roman Empire. It has been passed down through the ages and in, until it comes to us. Christ is risen. Jesus is alive. God's promises live on in you and in me. The story doesn't end. Somebody told, will you? Amen. We're going to sing a song which I hope is familiar. It's been around for quite a time called Pass It On. <laughs>
Please join me in declaring what we believe with the words of the affirmation of faith. We believe in the wildness of Easter, when strong winds blow through the earth and the logic of all life is challenged by talk of resurrection and return. We believe in the power of God to contradict our naive assumptions and overturn our natural expectations by raising Christ from the dead again, even in the apathy of our modern lives. We believe in the presence of the risen Christ, who is here now in community of faith, smiling on our faces, nurturing our hopes, and challenging us to deny the finality of death. He did not die in vain. God swept a mighty hand across our game boards and planted a wildness in our hearts that will not go away. It is the wildness of Easter, and it means that nothing will ever be the same, that death itself has died, and that those who are in Christ will live forever. Hallelujah. We praise God for the wildness that won't go away. in response to God's greatest and best gift to, love, to us, his resurrected son, Jesus Christ. May we return our gifts to God with thankful hearts. We do indeed thank you for all the ways you support this ministry. Uh, we share ways to give here and online. Um, thank you that for this past year, you've helped us keep going and be able to expand in new ways through online worship and other means. So blessings be upon you. of hope on this glad day we bring our gifts to you 
asking that they bloom like Easter flowers, wakening the world to your gift of love. We give thanks for the dawn of your new day, for the rising of your son, our savior, who fills the earth with light and life. Amen. You may be seated. For those of you at home, I hope you've gathered uh, elements for communion, some kind of bread or cracker, juice, wine, water, whatever. Did everyone in the sanctuary get the cups if, if you wanted them? Friends, this is the table of the risen Christ. In this feast comes the root of our joy. In this feast gleams the promise of the earth and the glory of all creation. In this feast comes Christ, Savior and friend of all. You all are welcome and encouraged to be here at this table and share in this meal. Please join your hearts with me in prayer. God of all creation, love came to life when you spoke and light entered the world. Your word pushed up mountains and pulled up tides. Your word grew palm trees, grapevines, kelp, carrots, birds of paradise, cacti, and grasses. Your word breathed, breathed life into tigers, whales, goats, roadrunners, emu, and elephants. Your word breathed life into us. As we lived in the world you created, sin marred your work. And so you entered into covenant with us to redeem us from sin. Time after time after time, you called and we did not listen. Time after time after time, we walked away from where you wanted us to go. Time after time after time, you kept calling, kept showing us what you had for us. And when time after time after time, we declined your invitation, you continued to embrace us as your children. You sent Jesus to be, to be your love for us, to come to life in us. Jesus came and he lived. Jesus showed us how you wanted us to live and to love. Jesus came with a passion for your people, for justice, for peace. And we did not listen. Jesus came living as an example of your love, and we ignored it. He told his story, foretold what would happen to him, and then it did. Your word was arrested, tortured, and executed for our redemption. The life you breathed into him ended. And yet the story was not over, God of surprises. On the third day, your love came to life again. Christ's tomb was empty and we were redeemed. Your love came to life in Christ and rekindled a fire in us, a fire to love, a fire to serve, a fire to believe. May the grapes of the vine and the grains of the field breathe life and love into us as we share this meal. In them may we be fed to feed others. May the love that came alive continue to live in each of us. As we eat and drink, may your love call us out to serve you, God, who breathed life into us all. God in community, holy in one, gather our hearts as we gather our voices to praise Jesus taught us saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At the end of the Passover meal, Jesus began a new celebration that we call sacrament. Among friends gathered around the table, Jesus took bread, and having given thanks for it, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this remembering me. Later after they had eaten, he took a cup and again giving thanks for it, he poured it out. 
And he gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is the new covenant with God, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. All of you take and share it, remembering me. So now we do as Jesus did. We take this bread and this cup, the ordinary things of this world through which God blesses us. In these, Jesus has promised to be present. Through these, Christ will make us whole. I invite you now to share in the elements as you have at home or here. And for those in the sanctuary, be aware there's two little flaps to lift up. Please join your hearts with me again in prayer. Generous and faithful God, you have fed us at your table. May the nourishment we have received enable us to enrich the lives of others wherever we may go from here. Whether the future be dark or bright, the road be smooth or rough, whether our cares be light or heavy, our song be strong or weak, keep our hearts warm and our hands open our lives ever embracing and ever embraced by your love. Amen. Let us share together in our closing hymn, The Day of Resurrection. It's on page 118 in the blue hymnal if you want to follow along. As we share in the benediction, please respond, Alleluia, Christ is risen. May our faith find voice and shout, Alleluia, Christ is risen. May our souls find purpose and shout, Alleluia, Christ is risen. 
May our voices find faith and shout, Alleluia, Christ is risen. May our hearts find life and shout, Alleluia, Christ is risen. And may the love that has newly defeated death be with you, with those you love, and with those whom no one loves, not just for now, but forever. Alleluia, amen.